Let me give you a little bit of history on Battlestar Galactica, just in case you've never seen the series or reboot. The success of Star Wars didn't just influence Paramount to bring back Star Trek. Universal Studios also wanted that money, so they hired Glenn Larson, the creator of Knight Rider, to come up with a space action series for TV. It would have a massive budget and visual effects like Star Wars. The series banked on its scope. The good thing was that the show wasn't just about the effects. Its story was what people gravitated to. Yeah. People will always say it's a knockoff of Star Wars. It took lots of ideas from it. Fox and George Lucas even tried suing them over various things, which was dumb since Star Wars itself took ideas from other things too. It combined Egyptian lore, sci-fi, and the Buck Rogers hero type. It was all about protecting a hunted race of humans from the evil Cylons. The whole goal of the series was to find Earth after they had found out it was one of their lost originating worlds since they had no place to flee to. Stargate got a lot of ideas from this show, but due to its very expensive budget, the series was canceled with an unresolved cliffhanger. There was a writing campaign, lots of people protested, and there was blame with the show being moved around in the time slots that caused the viewership to drop, so Universal wanted to bring it back. But they did make one mandate. It must be made cheaper. So the entire series was restructured. I did agree on some of the changes. One of the biggest issues the first series had was the size of its cast. It was huge. There were lots of characters that always got buried because several of them overlapped in skills or purpose on the ship. They didn't have much to do past early episodes of introducing us to the universe or a character. Very few cases where they can get everyone involved. They even had a pet animal to deal with in a costume. The only episode that got to use everyone that I could think of was when they had to deal with a fire on board. So a lot of main cast members were dropped. I wouldn't have minded this so much, but they never fully explained what the hell happened to everyone. And they got rid of most of the primary cast. Imagine the third season of Beast Wars removing Rat Trap, Cheeto, and Rhinox with Optimus Primal only having Silver Bolt and Depth Charge, then never saying what happened. That's what they did here. The series resumes after a 20 year time jump between the first and second series. So it's throwing a lot of new stuff at everyone. The next major change was the reduction of its budget. This means we won't be getting much when it comes to space battles. I don't mind that. When we do get space battles, it's a treat. TNG had a tight budget. They were able to knock out some great action episodes every so often, but they also made good small episodes. 1980 failed hard here. If you thought Andromeda season five was bad when they were trapped on that planet for half a season, 1980 was worse. It virtually never took place in space. And when it did, it was 95% stock footage from the first series. Every which way they avoided doing space episodes past the first few. This means almost all of the episodes take place on modern Earth, not in a good way. At the end of the first season, they revealed that Galactica got in range of Earth's transmissions and what we heard was the moon landing video. Now, they could have used the distance time dilation as a way out of this issue, but by shooting in contemporary 1980, it saves a whole lot of money. The first few episodes, I think they're okay. It's setting stuff up, we have two new cast members, new technically. One of them is supposed to be a character from the first series grown up. If they never mentioned it, we wouldn't even have known that was supposed to be him. That's how different the character was. This is probably the first time people saw Kent McCord who played Crichton's father on Farscape with Barry Van Dyke from Diagnosis Murder, both playing Captain Troy and Lieutenant Dillon. They completely missed with these characters. They heavily relied on the whole fish out of water trope, but it kept getting more annoying as it went along. The show became this mess of Two actors being super serious, almost never getting to be human, then the other half of the show being a joke, with no character development through the 10 episodes. Remember with the first series, the colony was running for their lives, the Cylons eradicated whole planets, they were able to find them wherever they went, they got into fights virtually every episode. Even the first 1980 episodes showed what could happen if the Cylons found Earth. You don't have to worry about that. The show turns into elementary school field trips mixed with Captain Planet. I wish I was joking. 
I don't mind the whole Earth setting. You could do some interesting episodes with that. You got spaceships, advanced technology, the Cylons are right on your butts, now the stakes are bigger. You gotta stop them from reaching Earth and Earth finding out about you or them. But no, they don't have the budget. All we can afford is have these flying space bikes that barely get used, have the ability to cloak ourselves and our ships so that we don't have to spend money on visual effects, then babysit a group of kids who all gain superpowers for 40% of the series. Basic Galactians, nice going riders, they should be called Kobolians, you don't name species after the ship, gain superpowers a la Superman style, so they can jump really high and have super strength. Almost like this would give them a good advantage over Cylons. Instead, just use this in an episode about them cheating in a baseball game. One of the most bizarre changes the show did was have Adama answer to a kid. Adama was basically the field commander and head of the council in the first series, but this time taking orders from Dr. Z, a super intelligent prodigy. He does have some sort of abilities, but they don't bother to really get into Dr. Z's background until the last episode. And still, they can't explain him right. 1980 was throwing out things everywhere hoping something stuck. I don't care how smart or gifted a kid is, he doesn't have the experience that Adama does from wars. He's a politician. The knowledge you get from seeing how people act in situations is far more valuable than you knowing how fast a viper can reach a target. You're also making one of the most important leads be second fiddle to some rando. Adama, for a lot of people, was the father figure of the show. At first, I was trying to figure out why Larson did this. Was it because the actor was busy? No, because most episodes didn't even use Galactica. We hardly get scenes with Z or Adama. They just did it to have someone spout exposition when they needed it, I guess. It's one thing to reduce the cast. It's another to change what the show is about. It just stopped being a sci-fi show. If the budget is too low that you can't virtually show no new effect shots and you're forced to do four episodes about kids in order to recoup the cost each time, you can't do this series. This is not even the worst thing about 1980. There was the Halloween episodes. We go from the Cylons, mechanical life forms that kill and wipe out planets, a force of nature, to a stupid Halloween two-parter where these new and improved Cylons reach Earth and it's all about jokes everywhere. One of them gets invited to a Halloween party. You'd think this would be the perfect time for them to use those superpowers they loved showing off with the kids. Nope. Earth's location is endangered and they just play around for two episodes. There's no real tension. It's just dumb nonsense that stops Troy and Dylan finding them. You'd think that baseball episode was done so that more money would be put into this important two-parter? I don't know what was going on with the production team. It's like they were doing whatever to get episodes out and they couldn't get money for anything after episode three. The only saving grace that this series had was the final completed episode. I can't call it a series finale since the show was canceled during production of episode 11, where they started to give us backstory on what happened 20 years prior, bringing back the fan favorite, Starbuck. Everyone agrees this is the best episode of Galactica 1980 made. It was an actual good story. It had no budget, like the others, but the writer cared about what happened. What were the final days of Starbuck? Where was this for Troy and Dylan? Besides having screen time with the kids and the three-part pilot time travel plot, which got all dropped due to budget issues, we never got to know them. Characters that I thought would have been used to give us background for them, they just did whatever. There was no moving plot once the pilot episodes ended. That was really it. It was like they spent money, went over budget, do crap two-parter bottle episodes, and repeat till canceled. Reducing the cast and lowering the budget, fine. But it still needs to be a science fiction show. We need to see Galactica. We need to see the Vipers fighting Cylons. And I don't mean with stock footage. The show doesn't even explain where any of the ships are. Was the colony nearby Earth? Did you have to travel for several days to reach Earth? That's how poor the show explained things. If I got a chance to fix a series, the first thing I would have done was get rid of the kids or have them be a part of one episode only. Dylan and Troy had something going on in the pilot. They had met this journalist, Jamie Hamilton. That would have been a way to have a point of view character. Jamie would learn the truth in return, help out Troy and Dylan blend in. She would be their anchor for the planet. After that, 
Earth would have to be protected. I would have an episode that set them up at some sort of advanced facility. They always showed off that the Kabolians are much smarter than humans. Troy and Dylan shouldn't have problems getting job at places with the help of Jamie. That way, they could start transferring materials to Galactica to replenish supplies, power, and weapons, and I would have had the Cylons find Earth quickly. The whole first season would be about preventing an all-out assault on the planet. The superpowers thing, I would keep. I'd use it to help them fight off any Cylons that got on the planet. The one thing I also would take would be the more advanced Cylons introduced in the Halloween episodes. They were created so that they could learn about humans and become human, meaning they could mask their real appearance as a human. I know I'm ripping off the reboot series, but that way it becomes this cat and mouse thing. Cylons are undercover, they have to prevent the countries from finding out their existence. Supplies have to keep going to Galactica and the other fleets to defend Earth, build up the pressure till something gives, all while explaining what happened to the missing characters. Who died, who decided to call it quits, because there had to be some that didn't want to do this anymore. Show the boxy side of Troy's character more often, and definitely not leave those two idiots as stiffs. Dr. Z? I'd keep him, but he wouldn't be leader. I'd still use him as the only connection we got to Starbuck. If they had gotten a little more money, answered what went on in the past and kept that drama up, because the main reason why we tune in was this small group of people and ships barely surviving as they got attacked daily, going from planet to planet, meeting aliens, getting some backstory on Cylons. Some of that still needs to be kept in 1980. With the exception of the final episode, don't watch this series. Watch the original series and the reboot series. They don't link to each other. There were several changes done between the two shows. Both are unique to watch. And the reboot is one of the few reboots that I will say is good.